Greg, uh, all of us here in South Dakota, our hearts go out to all of our friends down in Nebraska. Can you describe what the last two or three weeks have been like down in Nebraska? Yeah, there's just been so many little rivers and tributaries that just completely washed out farmland and, and a lot of folks' homes, and they're still not back in it. There's a couple of towns that still don't have drinkable water that they can get into. And I was talking to some soybean farmers a couple of days ago who said, Bud, they've got parts of their land that they're not going to be able to plant mm. for not this year, not next year. They're saying three to four years before they're going to be able to use that land again because of all the wash that came into their their area. So th- this is something that's going to affect people for not just weeks and months, but, but, but years. And it's been just that kind of an impact down here. And so, uh, heck, parts of I-29 are going to be closed from Omaha down to Kansas City until June or July to get the roads fixed. So it's just it's impacted an awful lot of people. And I know Nebraska for the spring game is going to have Red Cross buckets at every entrance so people can throw some money in to go to flood relief help. And Nebraska is going to honor the first responders as they're going to have them on the field before the start of the game. So it's it is impacting a lot of people. The university gets it. Oscar football gets it, and they're going to try to at least uh, tip their cap to some people tomorrow. And I think a lot of people, usually, obviously, everyone looks forward to the spring game every year. I mean, you had a record crowd last year of 86,000. But I think this spring especially, this is kind of what people need to kind of at least signal that life is somewhat getting back to normal again. Yeah, and that's the beauty of sports. It, it's it's a release. It's an outlet. It's to let people celebrate something. And so, I, you know, I, we know where we fit in the grand scheme of things, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a game, and it should be for fun, and it's kids having a great time, and that, that's other thing. But I think it does serve a purpose in something like this, that it does allow people to kind of put those awful things that they're dealing with to the side so that they, don't, that they can, you know, catch their breath a little bit and then then go back and face reality. So, I, you know, I think that sport can lead itself to that. And I and Oscar Athletics, I think, the, a big part of that in this, this state because it's, there's no pro franchise. Mm-hmm. Pretty much everybody has some kind of allegiance to the Huskers. So that, that, in that way, I think Nebraska takes that very seriously and can have a big and a, and a positive impact for this thing. 55 with a few clouds tomorrow for a kickoff at about 1 o'clock at Memorial Stadium. How different has spring number two felt in the Scott Frost era compared to spring number one? Well, even even Coach said that, you know, they're miles ahead of where they were last spring. Yeah. And it started right out of the gate. They had good practices from the get-go. And because of taking the week off for spring break, they've been at this for about six weeks now. And I, I think he, I think the general feeling is, is that everybody that is here has really – taking a step up with their game and this this group's going to be added to in the summer when you have all the true freshmen that will arrive and be grow the roster quite a bit but i just think there's a feeling of we know what we're trying to do we know what we need to do and we have a better understanding of what the coaches want and i the, the best thing that happened to me jeff in the spring was we took the spring break after about six practices the players themselves organized the players only practice on the Sunday before they got back hmm. and said, we know we have a full workout on Monday. We're all getting together as a team and going to have an extra workout on Sunday. So that we're ready to go with the coaches on Monday. Well, that's ownership of the team and wanting to take that extra step to be good. And I, I got to tell you, every coach, when you bring that up to them, big old smile on their face. <laughs> Uh, when they know the guys are taking complete ownership of this program, that's a really good sign to me, and I think that sets up for good things in 2019. I think another good sign in all the reports I've been reading out of Lincoln talk about the, the maturation of Adrian Martinez, who, of course, was a blank slate a year ago and now has a resume and also has some expectations to live up to, and it sounds like that uh, he arrived ready to go this spring. It's his team, and everybody knows it, and he – wants that responsibility. He's a heck of a football player. We saw, we saw enough of that last year to know that. And this is a kid that just keeps getting better. He's, he's, he's a little bit thicker. He knows what kind of contact he's going to endure during a football season now that he didn't know a year ago. And his accuracy has been better. He's had very few picks thrown during the, the, the 14 practices that have already occurred for this team. And it's, it's Adrian's team. 
And I'm very comfortable with that. I think Scott Frost is very comfortable with that. And he's a natural-born leader, and I am grateful that he is the Oscar for a couple more years. <laughs> he's going to be fun to watch. And, of course, the success of any Nebraska team starts with running the football, and guys like Jalen Bradley and, and Brody Belt, the redshirt freshman, Moses Bryant moving over from defensive back, giving Nebraska some new looks running the football this season. Yeah, and, and that position is going to look a lot different in August because you've got – Mills, the junior college back that'll be here. You've got two high school players that are really good, one coming from Jersey, one coming from Georgia, that are going to add to that room. And, and then Maurice Washington, you hope, gets everything gets, that he's dealing with off the field taken care of and that he's back full go. So tomorrow's scrimmage, I mean, you're going to hear names like Brody Belt and Jalen Bradley and Wyatt Mazur that I, I don't know how much you'll hear those guys hmm. come the fall, but they taking advantage of their opportunity to at least been, to get noticed by the coaches. But that room, to me, will, will change dramatically in, sure. in about 60 days when the rest of those guys get here. As Ryan Held said, we've got the cavalry coming. For that <laughs> these, guys, these guys have worked hard in the spring to try to at least take, make us take notice of them. No more Stanley Morgan to throw the ball to, and no Wilden Robinson. Uh, he'll be sitting out the spring game, it sounds like, with a hamstring issue. But... Uh, guys like Andre Hunt, the red shirt freshman, sound like he's making a big impact. And of course, you got JD Spillman and Mike Williams back catching the ball as well. Yep, and JD's going to sit out tomorrow as well. So no JD, no Wandale. Wandale has really wowed the coaches when he was healthy on the field. They think he has got a chance to be a really special player in this program. He fits this offense to a T. Uh, and so I think they, they have huge expectations for him. Andre Hunt close to being an impactful player a year ago, I and mean, then he have, would have a nick or a slight injury or a tweak, or he just didn't quite grasp the playbook well enough to get playing time a year ago. And part of the reason was he was stuck behind Stanley Morgan. Yeah. So you, you don't want to keep him off the field very much. But I think Andre Hunt has a chance to be really good. Then you have the two junior college wideouts, Williams, you mentioned, and Jerron Woodyard, who both guys were – you thought you'd see quite a bit of it a year ago. We saw maybe more of Williams than Woodyard. But both, and maybe Jerome Woodyard has even taken the lead in this, have had good springs. Um, a couple of the scrimmages that they've had over the last few Saturdays, Woodyard has made big plays. And I think he has a chance to make a big play tomorrow. So that's one of the names that I would keep an ear out for tomorrow and keep an eye out to see if he does do something special because I think he's got a chance to be one of those big playmakers for Nebraska come 2019. Up front, the Sioux Falls connection continues with the Huskers. Matt and Will Farniak both on the offensive line for the Huskers, but the Nebraska looking for a new center and trying to build, kind of rebuild the new offensive line. Yeah, and Will Will factors into that fight. He, he's in that center depth chart right now, along with Cameron Jurgens, who was a, a highly touted young man out of Beatrice, Nebraska, who came to Nebraska as a tight end. And Scott Frost, after a few workouts last fall, looked at him and goes, I think you could be an All-American, All-Pro center. Hmm. You have everything it takes. Your frame is big enough to hold the weight. And so the plan went into effect about mid-October last year to convert him into a center. And he'll have a chance to be Nebraska's center. Will Farniak is certainly in that fight as well. Nebraska returns three starters on that offensive line, both tackles with one of those beat Matt Farniak, who's become the leader of that group. He's pretty vocal. Um, he, he's got an interesting... Uh, personality about him, a little <laughs> bit of a wisecracker, but I really enjoy being around him, and I think he's kind of taken the lead in that room. And then Bo Wilson is back, who started a lot of games last year for Nebraska. So the center spot's the one. They will not name a center after tomorrow's scrimmage. I think that will go into August with the drills there before that somebody locks that spot down. But that'll be interesting to follow. And that, that group, you hope, continues to, to make strides because to win – and when at the level all this fan base wants to do, you've got to be good up front. And Nebraska was okay up front last year. They need to be better than, they, than they've been in the past. Up front on the defensive side, they obviously need to bring more pressure. And so we've got the Daniels brothers and the Davis brothers. It all starts with the four Ds there. And love all four of them. Jeff, if you, if you said name me the, the position group that has been the most impressive in spring ball, without a doubt, is that offensive line. Mm. They're big. They're deep. There's a lot of guys who played a lot of football, including all four Ds. And what is the Darian Daniels, Damian's older brother, the fifth year transfer from Oklahoma State, he not only has come and 
grab the coach's attention with his play, but he's quietly become maybe the leader of that room a couple of months being here on campus. And with his arrival and with his younger brother, Damian, those two guys, I think, have a chance to lock down that nose tackle spot. And that's big because that allows Carlos Davis to slide outside. Probably better fit to be. Last year with the injury to Stoltenberg up front, Carlos had to play the nose a lot. It's fine, but I think he's a little bit better on the outside. And so that they're able to slide him out there. And then you have Ben Stilley, who's a really good football player. So Nebraska, I think, is deep, talented, and I think that's the kind of defensive front you need to, to win and win at a big level at the Big Ten. Linebacking core got some news this week about Nick Henrik being out with a shoulder injury and having surgery there. How much is that going to sideline him? Well, it, it, they hope to have him back sometime in August. Well, that's awful close to the start of yeah. the year. The, the biggest concern probably on this team would be the lack of depth at both inside and outside linebackers. That's the, the spot. And Nebraska learned last year that when you go up against the, the heavies, the Wisconsin, the Michigans, the Iowas, who love to run downhill, you better be good in that middle and, and line inside linebacking spot. Nebraska's pretty thin in that group. You've got Muhammad Berry, Colin Miller, and Will Honus. Will Honus coming off of an ACL has done quite a bit of work in the spring. He's not completely full strength and won't be until August. Uh, they'll have a young man named Jackson Hanna who will arrive, uh, a true freshman from Tennessee that will have a chance to get on the field next year on the inside. But that group's going to have to hold up against those big, those big uglies of <laughs> Wisconsin and Iowa. And then on the outside, can they get enough pressure? Can they get to that quarterback? Tyron Ferguson, Alex Davis, JoJo Dolman have done a good job. Are they good enough? Can they hold up for the whole year? Is there enough depth there? Those are some things I think will be the question marks for this team as we enter the fall. In the secondary, I counted up 27 guys on the roster at defensive back, Greg, but not a lot of guys that have a ton of experience. And I did see that Eric Lee got moved from cornerback to safety. You got Lamar Jackson back to Caprio Boat Boodle. What is the state of the secondary at this point? You know, that group has, has really bought into Coach Fisher. And Scott Frost would tell you that a year ago, that was he thought that group needed to be completely blown up. And now those guys are some of the leaders on this football team. Lamar and DiCaprio did a great job as the season went on last year. Nebraska really likes both of them, along with Cam Taylor, who's now a sophomore, really talented player out of Alabama. And then, you look, Nebraska graduated three safeties last year. Uh, so they're, they're replacing a bunch of guys. Deontay Williams is back there. Markel Dismuke was a, a big player on special teams. He's going to get a crack at the safety spot. But as I said about the cavalry arriving for the running backs, same thing could be happening in this summer with the DBs because there is a really talented group of freshmen about to hit campus that are really going to add a lot of depth and a lot of competition. I can't wait for August to see what that group looks like because these young freshmen that can play, and they're going to get in there and battle with guys like Jackson and Dismuke and Deontay Williams and fight for playing time. It's going to be fascinating to watch. I think that will quickly become maybe Nebraska's deepest position group uh, almost overnight when June gets here and those freshmen arrive. And in the kicking game, Caleb Liborn was the punter to start last season, but he had some struggles. Isaac Armstrong came on and kind of took over their, the duties there. What is the status of the punting game at this point? Yeah, Isaac is still probably the number one guy. Uh, he had a really good spring and seems to be uh, still the, the front runner for that position. And, and then the place kicker, they, the, the confidence of Barrett Pickering, yeah. not only his own confidence, but the confidence of his teammates, the coaching staff, and the fans and him grew a lot with that performance against Michigan State on that awful day with the snow coming down and temperatures in the teens. His ability to knock through three field goals and win that game for Nebraska, he's feeling good, hitting the ball well. And so Nebraska goes into this year feeling much better about that spot than they did 12 months ago. So, I, you know, I don't think you'll see any live kickoff or punt returns tomorrow. I think that will be off limits, but you probably will see all those guys at least punt and kick the ball tomorrow. And you're prepared for everything, right? With the spring game, you never know what's going to happen and how many different guys you'll be talking about. And they all switch sides. It's crazy. <laughs> all of a sudden, you go, wait a minute. 40 was on the red. Now he's on the white. Yeah, you, it's, you know, it's probably the messiest, <laughs> the messiest broadcast. But, you know, after about the first maybe 10 minutes of the game, I, I, and Brendan Stein is going to be down on the sideline for us tomorrow, I said, you're going to be the star. He's just going to be sitting there talking to – you know, maybe Johnny Rogers mm -hmm. and Eric Crouch, and people will want to hear that more than they want to hear us describe a, a three-yard pass play into the backfield <laughs> or something. So it's a fun day. It, to me, it's, it's 
one of the great days, Jeff, because so many people who don't have season tickets get a chance to come to a game yeah. and watch the Huskers for a much reduced price than what a regular season ticket would be. That's pretty cool to have people come and experience Memorial Stadium. And, and hopefully, and you, you laid it out earlier, hopefully the weather's pretty good and people can come and, and not be uh, wearing blankets and all that stuff <laughs> and they can enjoy themselves and, and watch this football team one last time here in the spring.